Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to be planting three of these Radiance Abelia from the Southern Living Plant Collection uh, in this front yard bed in a yard in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Uh, this is a big landscape project that I've had going on for uh, coming up on a year, maybe 10 months uh, at this point. Uh, it's come a long, long way. I'm in the process of converting what was a large annual bed out here during this first spring and summer here uh, into uh, its more permanent pieces. And uh, these three abelia are part of that. Radiance only gets maybe two to three feet in height. It can get four to five feet in width or so. So it's gonna cover a lot of space here. It has this very vibrant uh, variegated foliage on it year round. Blooms pretty much all summer long. Pollinators absolutely love um, all abelias. And uh, so they're gonna be a great uh, complement to a yard full of pollinator plants uh, that, I have, um, ha that I have going in here. There's actually going to be a retaining wall that's going in across the front of here. You can't really see many grade changes uh, in these videos. It ma makes the bed seem all flat and everything, but I'm probably about a foot, um, foot and a half above uh, this little spot right here where the shovel's touching. And so there's, like I said, there's going to be a retaining wall going in front of these. These should get right to the edge of the wall, maybe dip down over it a little bit. Probably take a couple seasons for that to happen. But these are easy. Um, uh, Bilia like to prefer full sun. They will take part shade, um, but they tend to stay at their fullest in the full sun. The variegated ones definitely have a better variegation in the full sun. Green varieties of Abelia are definitely more shade tolerant just in general. Again, they bloom all summer long. Uh, I will say, you know, one thing on these, any dwarf Abelia, I don't care whether it's these, any of the variegated ones like uh, 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 Miss Lemon, or Kaleidoscope, or Radiance, or even some of the green varieties like Rose Creek. Be careful taking them out of the pot. They're, they're, they're actually kind of kind of have wispy, uh, thin wood, even on a, on a larger plant, right down at the base where they go into the ground. So kind of easy to break off. I will typically get them out of the container by holding the container upside down and supporting the soil uh, on the top, just like that. That is the best way to get one of these abelia out of the ground. Don't do any pulling on the top of one of these. Other than that, it's an abelia. They're tough as nails. I'm going to uh, dig these holes. When they go in the ground, I'm gonna elevate them an inch or two. I've got lots of planting videos uh, on my channel. Yeah, if this speeds along too fast, and uh, after I get these in the ground, uh, we'll talk a little more about them. So as you can see, uh, they're in the ground. Uh, there was a maple tree up here. I've talked about it in several videos. The stump got ground out and uh, even, even down in this area right here, and there's a lot of wood uh, in these holes. It's been eight months or so, but it still hasn't broken down a whole lot. Uh, but the abelia are just tough as nails. I'm not worried about them. I didn't amend the soil. Um, and, and I think on abelia, you wouldn't really have to think about it too much. Dig a hole, put it in the ground, leave it elevated a little so you don't end up overwatering it. Uh, these are super drought tolerant. They're hardy in zone six to nine. Uh, so a lot of you watching this can grow these. They keep their foliage year round. So this is how they look year round. The flowers are seasonal. They're They'll typically start pretty late uh, for flowering shrubs, sometime uh, late May, early June, and then they'll just continue to flower on new growth throughout the season. You can kind of cut these whenever you'd want to cut them if they're, if they're getting out of control. I think any time between, let's say, uh, March and, uh, and, uh, and July or so would probably be the best time to do it. That way you wouldn't be putting on some new growth going into the fall, but um, I don't even think that would harm them in all likelihood. And then you can fertilize them in the late winter or early spring pretty easy plants, uh, you know, qu quite honestly. I've got several other projects going on uh, in this space. You can come back and see how it's developing if you're subscribed to the channel. And uh, like I say, there'll be also be retaining wall work here, hardscaping uh, as well as part of this project. Thanks for watching. 